Okay. Um, so now that we're recording, I will call the meeting to order. 602, please. Um, we do have a quorum with six members here. Uh, the meeting purpose tonight, uh, monitoring report. Thank you for emailing. Um, negotiations and subcommittee reports. At this time, um, I will make uh, propose or what is it called? Um, mo move to make an adjustment to the agenda, which is the addition of um, a reserve request, which I'd like to um, add to the consent agenda. Any I'll second? Great. Moved by me, seconded by Sarah. Um, uh, further discussion. <clears throat> All those in favor, please audibly and visually say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda, please. Oh, yep. Thank you. Great. It passes unanimously. Everyone? Does anyone else have anything to do with the agenda? They'd like to bring up paper copies of the agenda. <clears throat> have you, ha you need one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go. Absolutely. Okay, then we're going to move on to the agenda with that one adjustment. Um, at this time, uh, we will hear public comment. The board welcomes comments but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared, although you can certainly verbally express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. And as the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. With that, I open the. Hi, Rachel. No, no worries. Um, I open the floor for any public comment. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kevin Mauer. I, uh, I live in Brookfield. And, um, you know, I think just generally I'm, I'm hoping to get more involved with, with the school board and make these meetings when I can. And it's, a, it's a tough job, so you know, thanks for volunteering. Um, I think just, you know, a, a general comment to begin with. I noticed the agenda wasn't posted online until this afternoon. Um, maybe like, uh, maybe 40 hours. So, it was a well, so um, you know, not a big deal, but I, I did notice that in preparation of, of coming today. So um, it would be great if that could get online at least 48 hours before the meeting. Um, and I think, you know, really I'm just hoping to, to listen and uh, you guys have a packed agenda. I'm sure that's the case with, with most meetings, but um, I think specifically for me, I, at this point, am uh, most interested in the five-year capital plan, sort of building on the data from Act 72, and uh, I think I did see many facilities on the agenda later today. I'm, I'm sure you guys are sort of that being the budget stuff already, but um, yeah, specifically that's that's my interest at this point is just um, you know our asset management plan goals and spe specifically like I said, you know, building on that Act 72 data, um, just learning more about our district's plan to to address what um, the studies found. So thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Looking forward to sitting in. Thanks. Thank you for your comment and for your attendance, and look yeah. forward to seeing you at more meetings. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other comments, because the rest of you are on the agenda, okay, <clears throat> I'm going to move on. Um, report out from subcommittees. Uh, I know that Emil. Hi. Hello. Um, you were going to report out on behalf of the ENDS subcommittee? Yeah, I'm happy to do so. So Thank we you. met um, about two weeks ago, and we're going to be meeting again in about two weeks. We looked at sort of what had been drafted 
maybe last year prior to my joining the board, we reviewed the portrait of the graduate and we reviewed multiple other ends options from other districts. And um, we're going to be looking at some state standards, the portrait of the graduate, and doing some cross comparison. And we're going to meet again in a couple of weeks and sort of restructure our ends. Report out. Any questions? I know that we all have homework mm -hmm. yes. um, to complete and bring to the next ends meeting. So um, I want to acknowledge that that's a further time commitment. So I appreciate that from all of you, not just attending those subcommittee meetings, but preparing for them um, and uh, bringing your thoughts and completed assignments. Um, Ryan, do you, Sam couldn't be here tonight, but did you have anything to report out for the ownership linkage? The only uh, outstanding item for ownership linkage that I was aware of was further research into uh, student representatives on the school board. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, been looking into that. I've been researching what other school districts do in terms of school, uh, student representatives. And the honestly, the uh, District Association of Illinois had the most comprehensive uh, kind of how-to document on it. I printed that off. I'd love to print it out and give everyone a copy to read and then discuss next month. Mm -hmm. um, and specifically, there are two sections in this that I think we need to pay attention to. It asks, mm -hmm. what can student board representatives do and what can't they do? This is a lot of what we've kind of hemmed and hawed about already and discussed. Things like, you know, for this, this document recommends that they attend open meetings, receive all open session materials, openly express opinions and advocate, um, be appointed by subcommittees, and attend other functions of the board as we deem necessary. But they don't participate in or receive closed session material, attend executive session meetings, or formally vote. But what really caught my eye about this district's plan was it had a 14 point um, questionnaire about asking, are we ready for this? And it has 14 questions to ask ourselves. You know, are we ready for this? So things like, does the board have the time and resources to make a commitment to effective youth representation? Does the board's culture promote open, open discussion? So um, I wanna copy this, give it to everyone, and I wanna take, I don't know, uh, 30 minutes next meeting to discuss it and maybe even go over that checklist and have a conversation further to de decide if this is appropriate. So what I would suggest is maybe if you can um, either scan it or mm -hmm. if it's online email it to Kyle yeah, and I'll Kyle email can to make it electronically mm -hmm. available to all of us. Definitely. Um, but one question about that board specifically, do you know what board structure they have? Are they a policy governance? I don't. I'll look into okay. that though. Um, and we'll find out about that. Great. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, v high proxy votes. So just like last time, you had uh, the proxy votes for Visbit. DHI is the Vermont Health Educator Initiative. It's the it's the group that is responsible for the health insurance, and so this lets you uh, either do exactly like you did last time. You can either delegate you some, if somebody's going and they want to be the proxy, you delegate them as the proxy. Uh, I'll be there. I'm happy to be your proxy. Uh, the high, and you could give the vote to your proxy to the the high board. Should you should you choose to, um, you know I I don't know that the you got the whole packet, so you got to see what they're going to be talking about at the annual meeting, and uh, I don't know that I saw anything that was super controversial or challenging in that in that agenda pretty straightforward they're going to provide the annual report and accept it and it's their annual business meeting so up to you what you want to what you want to do there uh, once you make your decision Kyle and I have some forms which you see a copy of in your packet and we just have to send that in with who has your vote um, so let me do, is any just is anyone interested in attending I'll start there 
Oops. No, that's all right. I thought two months ago we decided that Michael you, was the best policy. You decided for a VisBit. Oh. It's, a different, it's a different organization. Okay. Same exact concept, Ryan, yeah. and very similar format. Uh, VisBit goes from 8 to 8 to 8.15 on the Friday of the annual annual conference, and the high will go from 8.15 to 8.30. So if um, no one here has interest in attending, um, unless there are concerns uh, anyone has for um, d d proxying, is that a verb? Um, to the board, I'll uh, entertain a motion to, to give that over to the board. I will move that we uh have the Beehive board uh, vote for our board as proxy. I'll second. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Sarah. Seconded. Further discussion? Just curious mm -hmm. why the board and not Michael. Well, do you attend that one? Have well, said yeah. that? Oh. Yeah. oh, I didn't realize you were going to attend that. Oh, well, let's have. Do you want to do it? Well, we have, to, we, it? Have to, we have to act on the motion that's yes. for us. Okay, well, let's get rid of well, we that one then. Down. Okay, so all in favor? <laughs> Nay. Nay. Those opposed? <laughs> Nay. Okay, motion does not pass. Do I have any other motions on the floor? I will move that we have <laughs> Michael Clark <laughs> be our proxy voter for the VI board meeting, business meeting. Thank you. I'll second that. <laughs> second. <laughs> second square. Uh, further discussion on this one. All those in favor. Well, well uh, oh, and that's fine with you. You, you said accept? that would be fine with you. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything, is there anything we need formal. to worry about putting you in charge of that? Nope. Not that you'd volunteer. What's that? Yeah, I'm happy. Okay. I'm happy to do it. It's, I'll be at that. He, I'll be at that annual meeting anyway. He, and you probably have more information. Well, and you're not really discussing business no. other than the business that they're doing. But you have more as you schmooze around with them to say keep our health costs down as low as you possibly can. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. It's yeah. It has to do with our. Yeah. It has to do with our budget. Yep. Big part of our budget. Um, so I do have a motion on the table. Uh, all those in favor, please visibly and audibly. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Michael. Absolutely appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Um, policy governance training. You emailed us. That was today, right? I the, did. The, are we doing the? Are we the doing first anything? Email you sent? Yep. Yeah, so well, the, oh, the VSBA the annual VSBA conference. conference. I skipped. I skipped. Yep. Wow. I'm not that far ahead. <laughs> we're ahead, but we're not that far ahead. Um, so have people had a chance to register? I'm, I'm going, but only on Friday. I'm going, but only on Thursday. It will be like ships passing in the night. Oh. Nice. Yeah, I can't go on Friday. Um, you both are going? I'm planning yep. to go for Friday. Thursday's Great. the celebration of learning. I know. It's, it'll be very short for me. It's the training that you and I have to do too. So. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, I'll be there Thursday. Great. Thank you. That's really wonderful. So, um, they let the business office know what. What we owe. Yeah. So after this meeting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tomorrow make sure that we're all registered and that uh, we're we're good to go and that we have what we need. I'll call Christy in the morning. Great. Thank you. I I filled it out online. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it I think it just get, doesn't it get sent automatically? I just don't. It the, gets it does not get sent to us. It oh, gets it sent to get, the it gets sent to the VSA. So I'm going to call Christy Tate, oh, who is the person at the VSA oh. who organizes it, okay. and say, hey, here are the people that I should see on this, mm -hmm. and are we good to go? And please send us an invoice so that we can pay you. Got it. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Okay, now the policy governance training that we're registered for. Yep. So uh, last time <laughs> we, I shared with you that uh, when you decided that we would all do the uh, policy governance accelerator program. 
Uh, I have put all of you and Heather and me in, and that went off to the VSBA, so the Vermont School Boards Association today. Uh, I'm going to anticipate that at your school accounts, you're all going to get information with a new login and all kinds of things to participate in that accelerator program. And I'm going to guess that when you get down into the board education section of the agenda, you're going to talk about uh, maybe doing the first module or maybe overlooking or whatever you're going to do. But you should all get should all get information about that. And as I get more information about what it exactly looks like. I will send it to you. I'm gonna. I'm going to work on the belief that it's either going to come to you from a VSBA account, or it's going to come from the proprietary group that has it. Is the Brown Dog Consulting? So great. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Good shape. Something for us all to travel together. Yep. Um. Okay, so the time has come for our first uh, guess. This is the facilities monitoring report that um, we go over quarterly, and thank you both so much for being here, Bob and Wes. Um, th this, the, this particular setup at this school always feels really awkward, just because it's like we're facing each other and there's a table between us and the deck, but um, no need to stand. Uh, let me get here in the. I think I'll start rather than starting with because we've had the packet and looked through. But would you like to start and just kind of say where you're at? Highlight. Mm -hmm. Well, we literally have highlighted things or high litten things. <laughs> Rock paper scissors. Yes, ma'am. Who's gonna speak? <laughs> Uh, do you, do you mind if I get closer? Yeah. So Please, this is what I mean. It's so awkward. I will sit down. Pull up, Please. A, pull up a chair. I shall do that. <laughs> um, well, basically, you all got this report, right? Have you uh, perused it at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you all know we got spent a considerable amount of money. Uh, summer went very well. A lot of things done. Um, the report is self explanatory. Um, I have nothing to really present uh, other than this report. Yeah. Unless you folks have any specific question that I can feel, I'm done. Last year, we, I think at the end of last school year, we talked about the cleaning out of the, of the space. The bizarre the space. Yes. 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 And, and that's all cleaned out now, right? Okay. I'm very sorry. I did not hear you. The space between the central office and the high school building. Oh, yeah. um, has anybody driven through there? There's green space now. It's all cleaned up. The neighbor had significant amounts of material there. <laughs> he has moved it from our property onto his property. It's still an eyesore. The town is aware of that. I do not know if the town is going to be successful in getting him to remove some of that. Probably not, based on my experience of training as a law enforcement officer in town. Um, however, uh, the place looks nice. It is being mowed. We did not topsoil it or dress it because we did not decide whether we're going to put any outdoor space there. Should the administration decide that we're going to put outdoor classrooms there? At that particular time, we will do that. Um, to give you an idea of cost, it came in, the estimate was about 30, just under 30, 28,200 bucks. We came in at 12.5. So significantly under uh, bid. Um, however, we modified that. We did some value engineering in the middle of the, you understand value engineering? We, we, value engineering is uh, where we see some opportunity as, as the project um, matures and that we step in and save money. So we save $15,000, $16,000. We close those POs out and just went back into the closet. If we need to tap that for future work on that particular area, we shall. That's your question, ma'am. Yes. Do you have a follow-up? Well, 
what are we going to do with that space that's now been reclaimed? So my answer to that hinges a little bit on the, 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 I, if there aren't other questions, I'm going to go back to Bob and Wes and ask, can you just give the board the high level where we are in the with the feasibility study and what's happening Absolutely. about that? I Absolutely. think it's the important. Feasibility to study ninety nine percent done is complete. Mm -hmm. uh, we presented to the administration one month and a half ago, maybe a month ago, something like that. Uh, and until there's a commission now, which you all are very much aware of, and we have basically decided we're going to see how that. What, what comes out of that commission's uh, report. But in a nutshell, this school needs to go away. The Randolph Union High School has significant, we, we have one school that is in decent shape, that's RAS. It is not ADA of compliant though. Um, and then Braintree is in reasonably fair shape. All our other sites are in at least significant repair and some engineering corrections. And you guys are all, are all aware of that because every time that you see Wes or I, we usually have a problem that we are reaching out for money or assistance or at least to let you know that, that, that there's an issue and we're resolving it. We come with you with solutions for you to make the decision. Is that acceptable, sir? Yeah, I think. Now, if I can feel any specific questions. If you want to talk about water, you want to talk about power, you want to talk about whatever. Right now, yesterday, Mr. Clark brought up the transformer. We have a transformer that it could go out tonight. That would be it. That would be a really, really bad, bad. What would, the, what would the consequence of that be? Pardon me? What would the consequence of that be? What would be the shut school down until Wes and I can arrange to get a track trailer out there with the generator. Which school? The high school. However, keep in mind that the high school, right, this is going to, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> what I'm about to say isn't right 100 days in here, the high school is where technology comes out of. That's correct. Our I phones, our voice right. over internet phones. Yeah. So that, when, that is what happened during the summer, if you are at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we will go dark yeah. until, we get, until we get that. And your IT department, your technology department, are very, very adaptable. It's, I'm, not, I'm not here to you know, some blow smoke up there, but they are very, very adaptable. We had that event, and they they were shucking and jiving, man, getting us up, up as quickly as we can. And we have some contingency plans. We'll bring a, a TT unit in here. Uh, we'll probably reach out to the guard for some help um, to get the school powered. Nobody wants that to happen because that will be, that will really interfere with operations. It will interfere with continuity engineering mission, excuse me, educational mission. Um, and I don't want to have to do that. So um, that's a selfish comment, but man, I don't, because that it would be a real buster. I think part of the reason that I asked Bob to talk about the feasibility study is so that I know that I've sat at a board, at a board table with you all and I know that you know that we have some significant, not unlike a lot of Vermont, with physical plant challenges. I'm not sure if you all know that when the state did its study last year, they came back and they did identify RU. Every time I have to say this, I sit here and it's like I, the words don't come out of my mouth we're easily. We're, we're at the top of the in most need to be changed or fixed, changed, really redone. So what are right? we doing about that? Well, I think that what we have to do as a board, I think you, what you all are going to have to do as a board, and we're going to have to spend a fair amount of time focused on this, is where are you headed? What's, what's going on? So later in this, you have a report from me that talks about the future of uh, the Commission on the Future of Public Vermont Education, right? So uh, I think that that commission is doing important work. It's doing enough important work that I talked with the folks who are in charge of the commission. They, every county, they need to have, hold a meeting in. 
and they are going to hold the Orange County meeting at the Technical Center and the high school on October 21st. Right? We all should go. I think yeah. that, I think that, yeah, you've got to, we've got to go. We've got to get known people. This, a, we, this has been like an emerging problem. Yep. We, we are aware of it. We have made some, like we had a, a small subcommittee that was thinking about what do we do with our school buildings. Yep. And that seemed to sort of fizzle out. And Didn't we earmark funds though for the, uh, I, I think we did. Study. I think we did. And that's what we've done. That, feas right. that, that was the that's feasibility, the feasibility study. study. So that yep. feasibility study, we could come to you and go into much more depth about what we learned what we learned with that but i think at a high level what you already know how quick can that happen is <laughs> it seems like this is something we talk about and we like can point at the problems but but it gets more and more like i can feel a little bit anxious about mm. being really reactionary to problems in our school buildings when we know this is a thing that needs to be addressed and it like there may be things going on, but I don't. I don't see them happening. Okay. Um. So, so for me, what I need to understand is where is the where is the board with this? So you know that you've got a high school that's going to need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and know mm -hmm. that one of the things that the commission for the future of Vermont public schools they're going to close our what they've got to, what they've got to do. Well, I don't know that they're necessarily going to do that. They might. They might look at and it. say, hey, what's what makes sense here? I, I kind of wonder, you know, we have lots of, we have a, we have a high, middle high school with, I don't know, 300, let's call it 350 kids is what it shows in public, in power school. I think that number is actually a little lower because some of those go to the tech center, right? So, and? Are we building another, I think what we have to do is we have to engage our community, maybe other communities. We have to say, what is our vision? Are we just building a, are we building a new high school and moving into that? Are we building something different? Are we, I, I don't know what the answer is. Are we collaborating with any of our, any of the, of the high schools that are around us? What kind of condition are the surrounding high schools in, right? What does that all what does that all look like? And so part of what happens here, I think, I think Rachel, the reason that this conversation is sort of feeling like it's a little hung up yeah. is because you're Thank talking you. about spending a hundred million dollars yeah. on building a building. Mm -hmm. And so I think you probably want to do that in a way that is thoughtful and is looking not at the 20th century or the first half of the 21st century, we want to be building something that's going to take us, I believe our building has taken us 70 plus years from when it was, when it was first built. I think the transformer that uh, Bob just talked about was, uh, I think it might be original, right? And so it has outlasted. And I think what Bob did a nice job of, of kind of giving you the high level, right? You're talking about just that transformer. Mm -hmm. is probably a hundred thousand dollar expense to get a transformer a year to have it built and then another hundred thousand dollars to install it so i think you're thinking about a high school i think that what we have to do is we have to figure out what does that look like is it a high school for just orange southwest or are we looking at something at something bigger than that are we thinking that a 300 a 300 student high school is the high school of the future or do we need to do we need to have more conversation with surrounding folks? What does it look like? And do we make that decision? Uh, I think that you. I think that um, right now. Didn't we hire an engineering firm to do the surveying though for this? Yeah, it's done. That's the feasibility. Okay. That, that so is the feasibility. That's the, the feasibility the study. So right okay. now, okay. that's the so. Bob and Wes had those folks come in mm -hmm. and present to administration. There's so part we had a third party, and we did that by design because we could have done it, but we we worked for the school, mm -hmm. all right. And so we had the third party. We presented that to you folks. You guys graciously gave us the money to do that. They came in. They did a very good job. They came in. Everybody on that also. Um, and, and we have the state's assessment. We have our assessment of the school. We have a state's assessment of the school, and now we have a third party. 
And so that third, and that very, very, very well, well uh, known third party. They are in the middle of doing the, the Burlington project right now. Um, so if the decision is to be made, whether to go regional, whether to rebuild our school, we can we can fast we can press that trigger very very rapidly. Um, but but this also and, and interrupt me if I'm overstepping my but, but that's not a I mean you're, you're looking at you're you're looking at north of 150 million dollars you're you're gonna rub 200 million dollars easy look with Burlington now I know that we're not as large as Burlington but a building is a building that size of a facility and going to the 21st. And then the 22nd, if you go to 70, Mr. Clark said yesterday in our meeting with uh, Ms. Heather and um, the, the, uh, the IT, is that we're already 24 years into the 21st century. So I had 70 to that, we, you know, we gotta look at what's, what's coming up. What does AI have to do with that? What's all these things that are coming down the horizon? Um, so we have some thinking to do. So we have a, we have a, we have a plant that's, that's really, we have a facility that's at our, really, really um, poor condition. I think ultimately my question is, who who ultimately green lights it? Who ultimately says, okay, we are going forward with this plan? The tax I think the, the taxpayers. Tax payers. They, have, they have to vote. Yeah. So it, it's, but we have to present a plan. It's a PR, it's somewhat of a, of a uh, uh, PR effort because the community has to be behind it. And I think Michael, what you're saying is what does it look like? I think not, not only, that's interesting you bring up other, uh, other high schools. I hadn't really thought about that. My thought goes to should it all be in the same building? We have a middle school and a high school all in the same building. What does it look like if it's not that anymore? Um, and not just thinking about technology and um, you know looking into the future with that, but also we want our community to grow, right? So we, we can't just base it on 300, 350 students, I don't think. I, I, I think so we need to, to get the community behind it, but we need, a, as I see it, this isn't me saying what needs to be done, but I, as I understand it, present what might happen and put the price tag on it. Which I think we're starting to do tonight, right? This yeah. will be the first time that I'm sitting at a meeting hearing and saying, so that Orca Media has it, our community can have it, that hey, we've got a building that's been identified as the worst building in the state. We've got other buildings that are deemed in challenging places as well. And we've got an enrollment situation throughout the entire state. And so this is my way of getting it out there into the community to say, hey, here's what's, here's what's going on. Ultimately, I think you're exactly right. I think the board is going to figure out what direction from your, from your owner, right? right. What, where, did, where do they want to go? What, what's going on? Are people aware right now that our building, I, I mean, it, do, does the community know that that building needs to be, be replaced? I have a question. My dear why, so why was the subcommittee with the board's involvement dissolved? Well, it wasn't really our lane, is, okay. is what I think happened, helping mm -hmm. board members who were present at the time. Um, that at that point, it was about, yes, have the money, but we didn't yet have kind of, there was an oversight to be had that's on our level. Mm -hmm. I think you needed to find out what kind of options and you're sort of at that spot where you probably want a more in-depth conversation about the feasibility of the different of the different buildings and there's different versions of that that need to happen some of those versions like I'm a re we've we've this is our third or fourth meeting with me here we have not gone into executive session yet right I'm not a big executive session person some of those meetings like if we're thinking about sites where we might be able to build a school and whatnot that would have to happen in executive session giving you a high level here's what here's what the report says if that's what you want is exactly why I think the recommendation is we've got to replace we've got to replace the 
the high school and the tech center, but it's not it's not a easy, quick renovation kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm before I, I, one of the things that I just in what I've been hearing and then in speaking with some legislators, the state is trying to figure out what what to do. And I and yep. I spoke with one legislator and basically they were saying that Vermont is kind of the canary in the coal mine in terms of demographics nationwide. We just happen to be the first ones that are that are really dropping and we're seeing enrollment changes. And one of the things that I would like to see happen too is just that we kind of get on board with kind of where the state's going to push because if we don't get help in funding it, I mean, Woodstock tried to to build a new high school and that's a community that has a lot of resources and it failed. Could it, it. They couldn't do it. They couldn't get the bond passed. So I just... I think we need to make sure that we're working in conjunction with sort of where the the state is moving. I mean, I'm a big fan of the, what is it, the 802 Vermont Future or whatever it is, the young guy who's trying to get 200,000 more people to move into the state of Vermont because we are running out of young people. I mean, we really do need to encourage that growth. but. I, there's a lot of balls in the air in terms of things happening so that we've got the resources as a state I, and a I, community to make it happen. I agree that we need to be aligned with what, where the state is moving and I think we can use that as an excuse to not do things while we wait yeah. for them to figure things out. No. And in the meantime, we're going to have $100,000 here, $300,000 there, and we are going to be spending a lot of money trying to keep up a building that really needs to be replaced. Band-Aids. I also yeah. think, um, it, it, and, and this is the first step, but talking about it with the community so that the community, mm -hmm. I mean, in, in our last meeting we were talking about, hey, do we have a subcommittee that really has their finger on the pulse of um, uh, legislative, um, God, words are hard for me tonight, advocacy. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and this might be a place where we're trying to get support from the community, yeah. but they're also really keeping track of what going, because I, I too agree, but not just waiting and seeing, but putting more pressure on it. That right, PR we're working together to right. kind of push for things to happen, right. yeah. I saw a couple of hands. Yeah, um, first question. Uh, it sounds like we've got a few different feasibility studies out there, one by this private company, Lindbergh Architect, one by the state, and there was one other? Uh, you, you are internal. Our internal. Yeah. How can I access those? Can I read those? Okay. The, the state is on the state website. The state website. Okay. Make sure yeah. that you have access to the third party. It was presented at the board meeting, so it might be on the website. Lane, I think, printed it off and brought it. Okay. I, I feel like that may have been before my time. Yes. Okay. I, so, so stay with us. No, that's because I was there, and we have we are at the same time. So. Yeah, okay. Um, so we've got one on the state website, mm -hmm. one that was presented to us by Lane. And wow, well, can I review that again? Is it? Available anywhere? I, well, it would I be in the materials really posted to the web to this district website. Okay, posted to the OSD website. I'm not sure. I never went and checked, Ryan, so it might not be there. And then the, the private one. It sounds like that can just be sent to us. We haven't okay. really, we haven't we haven't released that one oh, yet. Okay. So we I think what you want is I think that you're going to want that. Yeah. On an upcoming agenda. I think so. And I don't think you're going to want to. No. I think you're going to yeah. want it sooner rather than later. Yeah, I don't. Well, and I think that part of what we want to look at it before the 21st. Uh, yeah. Or is it October or 21st? We oh, all right. Because we're going, going to be into going this kind of blind with the public. Well, but we also would need to be careful because that would Thank be you. an open meeting. We'd have to make it public, public. Mm -hmm. right? right. So, so it would have to be ready. 
Yeah, th there's which which what we have to be careful about at the moment is that report would identify it would put you at a it, it would need to be happening in executive session parts of that report i think parts of that report should happen in open session mm -hmm. and then parts of that report need to happen in closed session for instance it identifies real estate perfect okay. right real estate real estate is and a reason to go so if we yeah. start talking about hey we might want to purchase this piece of land right. or that piece of land it's going to get a lot more expensive sure I just want to be sure, Emil had a, uh, a hand up, and I, I think we also have a question or comment from the public. Actually, I have a couple of questions. So, um, it, and this is around this commission that was developed. So they just sort of did this statewide look at a health care system, yep. and that process took sort of two years of the biennium, and that public report was really just published yep. a few weeks ago. Is that a similar, I mean, this process sounds very similar to what they did for healthcare. I think it is, Neil. I think that so the meeting that's happening on the 21st from the Commission on the Future of Public mm -hmm. Education in Vermont, uh, it's one of their it's one of their early meetings. And have we reached out oh. to our legislature so they know about this meeting? Because I know they did not attend any of our health care related I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy to do that. It's not exactly. It's a little bit out of my lane, but not exactly. I'm promoting this and making sure the public knows about it, so that they can come out and talk to that commission and say, "Here are the things that we think are important for for Vermont education and what we would like to see happening." I I would see benefit to that, especially if we're trying to align with the state and we're thinking about funding options. What I heard you say is that RES is really sort of our building that's in the best condition, but it's not really ADA compliant or any of our it's buildings. It's not ADA. I didn't say it was not really. <laughs> it is not ADA compliant or any of our other buildings. Are any of our buildings ADA compliant? I bet Braintree is. Current code? No. Do we get by? All of them do. Right. So, okay. Emil, just so that we're we're clear about what's going on here, and I think it's in my monitoring report, the under ADA compliance, you have to be ADA compliant for when the building was built or when you've done a major upgrade. All of our buildings meet that requirement. Right. right. But they don't meet current. current code. They don't we, meet sort of progressed regulation. Correct. Oh, no. And no. ADA is the bare minimum standard. That's correct. not. Correct looking at universal design or but access. also we are not at bare minimum meeting we are a better than bare minimum okay all right however um anybody have any other questions on the specifics here no thank you i don't i could sit and talk about facilities all night long we think i would enjoy doing well Kind of, but, <laughs> other, other than the transformer, is there anything else you're really worried about? That's a big ticket item. Pardon me? Other than the transformer, is there anything that you're oh, yes, that you're really worried about? That's yes, a big ticket thing. We made a constant decision not to fix that water main, and that way, I don't know. Tonight, I think it's my night to stay up. Tomorrow night's his night to stay up. Think, think about it. All right. Those are the things that, that for, for your engineering staff, that's what keeps us awake. What is going to fail? Um, but we have contingencies, and we have good staff, and uh, we have a good administration. We're not when we need help, and, and, and I'm not, again, I'm not. I never had to come to you guys and get a no. I've always we present facts. We don't do any fluff of it. I'll tell you what I need. You guys come come through for me. So thank you very much. But, but there are no other questions on any any specific, sir. Can I, sure. just, can I just jump in just so we don't lose it here? Uh, since Bob talked specifically about the water main, I want to get a little more specific because I feel like we left it in a vague spot right there. So earlier this summer, Bob and Wes came and said, hey, our repair, we expect it to hold through the winter. You know, we think it's going to, it'll be all right. We have to get the parts for it. There was a lot of work that needed to do. We wouldn't, we, the timeline wasn't allowing for maybe necessarily completion until whatever, now, later, 
Uh, so what they have at the moment is they've gone ahead, I think this is true, ordered the parts or are in the process of ordering all the parts that they will need to do this should it fail a second time. Then it'll be dug up and all the parts will be on site. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be very quick. It'll be very, very quick. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll be another uh, heat uh, and get Colby middle of the night come and help me. Um, and it's on the it's on the to do list for this summer. And, and when we make those calculated risks, we do so. Uh, we just don't do it flippantly. We we look at, at, at you know what we're you know what the ramifications are of those. Are. So and the repair that we did do was a was a top notch job. You know, so uh, but it, it could fail at the street level. I mean, many of you own homes in Randolph, Randolph Center. Is, is the infrastructure there is is old also. You never know when something is going to fail. Our, our power supply, that's why you guys, we, we requested you guys prove the, the generator for RES. How, 20 years ago, how many times did we lose power at RES? Compare that to last year. Significant difference. Significant difference. You can't even compare it. You so. said that this building needs to go. This is my building, and I care about this one a lot. Uh, my good little girl. This goes, is your building that you care about the most? Yeah. Oh, I care about a lot. Uh, okay. Uh, I care about all the buildings too, but this, yeah. uh, this building is in, in poor condition. So can you give me a summary of why this has to go? Yes, oh, when we go. when we do Very the do you want to do oh. the you want to do the I think that that's part of the that's part of the facilities assessment. Great. Do you, so Perfect. if Looking we to. if we do that, I think that we could go right in depth with it, Brian. Great. Just just wanted a high level. That was good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there was a comment. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, is it should I stand or sit? I don't know what's easier. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if the board prefers. It's just. Are you comfortable? comfortable? I don't know how far we yeah. want it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Um, so, I, I have a lot of comments. I guess I, I think this is great. I mean, this is really you know one of my highest priorities um, for me to involve uh, in, in our school district. Um, so the state of Vermont, all of the reports generated as part of Act Seventy Two. Uh, they're online, so if, if you go online, uh, the state of Vermont, find our district, uh, the report by Bureau of Veritas, I think it's a consultant. Well done. Each, yeah, each report is listed online. So um, if anyone on the board hasn't looked through those, I would definitely encourage uh, you to do that. It, it really, you know, they are pretty high level evaluations, but um, they really like for Randolph Union, for example, you know, just going off the top of my head, I think um, the the parking lot lighting, some landscaping, and maybe the ex some of the exterior masonry. Those are the only things in the whole school that were rated good. Every other life safety uh, component of the school, plumbing, electrical, was rated fair to poor. Um, so it, it, and you know, and there's some estimated dollar amounts in there too. So if we look at immediate needs, if we project that out, you know, adjusting for inflation over time, you know, you really get a sense of um, some of those diminishing returns that we're talking about. A hundred thousand dollars here, a couple hundred thousand dollars there, and um, you know, I think Burlington, of course, like we've already talked about, is, is much different than our community here, but. Um, you know, I think waiting for state aid, I, I don't think that's a, a smart move. I mean, I think that's sort of why we're in this predicament, predicament statewide, is um, we just, we have all this deferred maintenance. We haven't had state aid for our schools for a long time. And, um, you know, the, if we start talking about a new school, so I'm, you know, uh, a young parent. There are a lot of families that we are friends with who I think, you know, appreciate the high price tag, but at the same time, we really value <clears throat> our facilities and all those sort of secondary benefits that go along with uh, well-maintained, healthy uh, school environments for our kids to learn. I mean, it's everything from, you know, the experience for kids you know, learning in these classrooms to the teachers, you know, 
I, I'm not an educator, but I would imagine that if you have uh, a well-maintained facility that's safe, that functions well, that meets the need of the community of students, you're going to attract uh, higher quality teachers, teachers that want to stay uh, in our community. And um, you know, it, when we start talking about new construction, it's going to be a high price tag. That's that's no question. But I also think. You know, yes, communities like Woodstock couldn't pass their bond, but I think at the same time, we have a lot of practical people in our community who I think if we can advocate for a new school building strategically, uh, I think that would be essential. You know, we don't want to scare anyone off. Uh, with, the, with the sticker shock, I mean, I think that would be a quick way to sort of uh, stop the conversation. So I think if we could sort of frame the conversation strategically and really be practical about where we are with our school buildings, what the needs are, I think that could help with some of that sticker shock. And you know, I think that would be a way, you know, I'm specifically talking about Randolph Union. Um, I think that would be a way to help uh, talk up the benefits and encourage some support, you know, looking at it from that practical perspective, just looking at the data, um, you know, politics aside, uh, taxes aside, just look at the data, look at the numbers. And uh, I'm looking forward to this feasibility study because uh, I imagine that would uh, also lay out some alternatives that could also help, you know, alternatives no build, rehab the school, or build new. And I think that could also maybe be another useful tool. And I'm I'm happy to work with Michael on you know, advocating for a plan forward. And, and I'm still learning how the school board works myself. And we all are. Yeah. You know, maybe, Michael, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but my, just again, my understanding from what I've, I've read and, and sort of looked into myself is, you know, when we talk about next steps, it would maybe be something that's generated, I don't know, at that superintendent level and then a budget of proposals presented maybe to the school board and the school so board. So I'm, I'm going to pause just for sure. a moment because yeah. um, we try to keep comments to a okay. three minute minimum so I, sure. I don't mean okay. to be sure. rude or silence you at yeah. all. Um, but I also think it's getting to a place where the discussion kind of, kind of has to come back to the board and figure out sure. what, what our collaborative next steps will be. Sure. I also want to be aware of the agenda and that we do have other um, guests here uh, for large discussions, and I want to be um, cognizant of their time as well. So I think what we've done tonight is we have clearly identified that the feasibility study is ready to be reviewed, and that you should review it, and that the feasibility study is, uh, you know, it, it is not tracking different than the other two studies that you <coughs> have already seen. So uh, it goes into much more detail. Uh, and I think that what we're doing right now is we're starting that conversation in some way with the community to say, don't be surprised that we're talking at the school board level about needing a new building or buildings. You know, we're going to have to look at, we're going to have to look at facilities. And to Rachel's point, we don't have the time to kick this down the, down the road for a lot of time. And the other piece of that is <coughs> it's also going to take multiple years to get this project done. This is not a, hey, we decide we're going to do it, and then it's built six months later. It's not, not it, it's, it's not building a house. <laughs> I do want to acknowledge that this should not come as a surprise to community members who attend meetings, have attended meetings in the last couple of years. So mm -hmm. this isn't and anything I know news. that it's in and listen, news. exactly. In no, it's specifically about yeah. our schools. This yeah. is not mm -hmm. a new topic, although it is very important to look into the camera and say this we're on the same page here in understanding. But this is not, the community has been made aware, you know, whether they come to meetings or not. I think they're a great time, but not a lot of people come. Um, so I just, I, I just need to acknowledge that because we're not talking about something that's been a secret. I think this is what you've hired Until me to do tonight. at this point. 
right? This is this is probably going to be one of the top three priorities for yeah. mm -hmm. this district in my time here. I think we also have to quickly acknowledge and second your point that our uh, voting community has been, our taxpaying community has been incredibly generous and um, I do think that they would be receptive to this because you're right, they're plugged in, they care, and they have been outrageously generous. Well, so, and quite if you're frankly, watching, this thank isn't, you. quite frankly, this isn't a choice to be made. This isn't an opinion that we need to do something about our schools. This is a fact. Yeah. So um, it's our job to get it done. Thank you thank both you. very much thank for taking the time. and. Um, Bob and Wes arrive really answer, early. I yes. imagine that they're leaving at at this point. You're more than welcome to stay, but you guys arrive at super yeah. early in the morning, well, and yeah, early, 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 I hope you have a great night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Wes. So uh, Kayla Link is here, the director of our um, special education, and it just kind of vaguely says update um, but I know that that you and Michael were going to talk about what you would kind of bring to us I don't want it to feel too presentation-y but so we I wanted to my slideshow then. <laughs> with with music and soundtrack and choreography I'm assuming no choreography ah. not that talented <laughs> no please any anything you have prepared I just want to make clear that we have people come here because we want to know where you're at and be accessible to you and, and, and uh, you accessible to us and all that good stuff. Yeah, so um, I really will spare you my slideshow. There's not any slides anyway. Um, but the thought was just to talk a little bit about what Section 504 is and what um, our responsibilities are under FDA, which is really just special education. Um, so I was going to talk a little bit about that and then just identify where we're at currently. Um, so when we're talking about special education, we'll I'll start with Section 504. When we're talking about Section 504, we're really talking about um, students' access. Um, so when we're considering whether or not someone might be eligible for Section 504, we're looking to see if there's a disability and if that disability substantially limits a major life function. So that could be um, breathing. Eating, sleeping, and learning falls under that as well, and oftentimes um, that can catch our kiddos um, in the public school system. But also, you know, um, we have students that are uh, hard of hearing or, or have FM systems and those sorts of things as well. Um, and our obligation is, is to ensure that they have access to all of the same programs and activities um, and buildings as every other student. Um, under IDEA, that is similar in many ways, um, except the eligibility process is that a student meets criteria for a disability, and that disability adversely impacts um, their academics or their functional performance, and then there is a need as a result of that for specialized instruction. So, um, when we're thinking about making sure that our kids have what they need, we have some obligations uh, to ensure that they're educated in the least restrictive environment. So all of our students have a right to a free and appropriate public education. And part of that is that they're uh, provided with the supports and services that they need and that they're provided those support services accommodations in the least restrictive environment possible. So to, to our um, greatest extent, we're trying to educate kids with their um, non-disabled peers in our public school settings uh, to the greatest extent possible. Any questions with that? That was kind of like a crash course. I'm trying to catch you up. Yes. Good. No, that's okay. great. I also want to acknowledge, if you've prepared slides, we would love to see the slides. I, I feel like I was uh, no, no, dismissive towards a formal that's presentation, fine. which is also great. You're not missing much, but I'm happy to share. Some yeah, why don't you get them up? Really, I covered everything. I don't want to. Okay. 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 
We can send you the slideshow. Yeah, we'll send you the slideshow. Would that be, yeah, if that's more possible, that would be great. Really has anything I just said. Okay. Um, thank you. And then, yeah, so I'm gonna kind of our current state right now, um, we, in terms of staffing, we're short as much of this state is. However, comparatively speaking, we're in a really good place despite being short. Um, we're short 0.5 early childhood special educator. Um, and so that's, you know, created some opportunities for us to think flexibly in how we're meeting the needs of our, our littlest people. Um, and so that's been really exciting in some ways. Um, and we are short a special educator at the elementary level and at the high school level, as well as a speech language pathologist. Um, so that's been a little tricky. <coughs> Our speech language needs are harder to pick up, right? Because we're not SLPs. So, um, we've worked with a union and they've been really great to um, have a side agreement so that we could access some virtual speech language services until we can secure someone in person. So we're still actively trying to find someone and if you know someone, let me know. You'll recall that you approved that side letter at the last yeah. meeting. So, and is there one, you try to have one for the district or one for each school? Uh, it, so it depends on needs. So okay. um, RES has historically had one. That person um, also has done some of our early ed services, though, in other buildings. Okay. Um, one has um, historically done um, brain tree in the high school, and then we've also shared for field. It depends from year to year where the needs are. Um, but right now, the person that's providing virtual services is really focused on our older kiddos that can be more independent um, with those services. So uh, they're primarily servicing high school and some fifth and sixth kiddos. Okay. But pie in the sky would be one at each individual school. Yeah, I mean, that'd be great. I don't think we have enough needs for a full-time SLP at, at Brookfield and Braintree. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not sure that would ever be reasonable, but um, each level, like elementary. Yeah. Kayla, if we had one more full-time position, we'd have enough to cover all of the needs within our entire district. Is that right? Are we we're down one SLP, or are we down more than one? Yes, just one. So if we had one more full-time position, we would have enough to cover without using the virtual service that you approved last meeting. Right. Um, we would have enough to do all in person. And this, we have the money for this, it's just we don't have the body? Correct. Okay. Yep. Correct. So and is it constantly being posted somewhere? Yes. Yep. yep, that was part of the agreement that with the side letters that we would continue to search, look, interview. Are there, is there a shortage in Vermont and New England? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, as I was saying, you know, we are in pretty good shape, comparatively speaking. Um, some in talking with some of the other directors in our region, they're down like 17 Whoa. professional positions. Wow. So, I mean, we are okay. <laughs> and what's really great about our special education positions that are um, not filled in this moment, we have some really highly qualified interventionists in our schools, um, and so they've worked really collaboratively with our special educators to make sure that we're still meeting the needs of all of our kids. So you'll know that you, like the Vermont Dakers done an article, or CAX, somebody has recently done an article where there's already three school districts in the state of Vermont that have said to their families, in all likelihood, we will not be able to provide all of the special education services that our children need and we'll have to provide compensatory services in the summer. So. Compared to that, we are doing fantastic. So these positions are posted. Like, what kind of active recruitment is there? Like, I'm thinking about, I just left a job that we have tons of students, come, like at NYU, we have tons of students coming out of an SLP program. I don't know, like, some, some, like some of us wanted to leave New York and come here. Like, <laughs> you know, like, what kind of active recruitment is being done and like and where there are students graduating. 
we do reach out to all of the colleges in the state. Um, many of the colleges will not send us student teachers because we're too far, right. um, which is tricky. I don't think that Norwich has an SLP program. Um, no, UVM is the only yeah. SLP program in the state. So um, we do work really closely with some SLP consultants, and we're always asking, do you know anyone? Yeah. And maybe there's somebody. And so far, we've had some potential bites on, like, maybe they could do some evaluations for you, but nobody that's willing to come in yeah. to a full time position. Yeah. So that's been tricky. A lot of people also have been going off to do their own private practice. So that's also been tricky. What, what is the salary of an SLP? Um, they're on our same teacher oh, pay okay. scale. Yeah. Great. But in some districts, they get paid, like where I used to, I worked in the district in Mexico, where SLPs were paid a lot higher than teachers. So in the state of Vermont, the Vermont NEA has uh, advocated that as licensed individuals providing services to education, that they, those SLPs need to be uh, on teacher contracts. They're also required to carry a separate license through AOE. So they have to carry their medical license and their educational license. So that's another barrier. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So I think that's a that can be a barrier. Mm -hmm. um, and then just speaking from the health care side, it's very where there's also recruitment issues. Yeah. Where we have a housing crisis. Right. So right. even if you can find someone to work the job, can they find a place to live? So that's an advocacy thing that we could work on, though, with AOE, to say, let's not do the double, double. I I don't know that we could do that because they're talking about requiring that of occupational therapists also. Uh -oh. They're expanding it rather than contracting. Yeah, and I. Um, What's the well, I think Is they're it? providing educational services, so it's understanding the structure, you know, understanding sort of the educational structure. It's different than the medical model, so I, I don't, I kind of get it. I mean, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't agree with it. I think that's over-regulation, but I also understand it conceptually. Um, we are, one last thing is um, we're preparing for our child count in the winter, which is really just, you know, getting a count. Uh, but kind of unofficially, we're right around like 18 and a half percent um, of our population on IPPs right now. Um, we are seeing a, kind of an influx of initial evaluations at the start of this school year. Um, and those have come from outside of the school, from parents, and, and from inside of the school as well. So, Just to make sure that you understand, Child Count is identifying all of the special education students within our district. Um, so that 18.5% is that students on IEPs and 504s, is that covered under one umbrella? Just or IEPs. OK. Do you have a percentage of? Um, students on the 504 as well. So I did look at not just specifically 504, but I looked at 504 and EST plans mm -hmm. recently. Um, and so, you know, EST is different, right? That's interve intervention based um, and can be short lived. So that could change tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that percentage was, I want to say, I want to say it was, it was slightly higher. Uh, maybe 19 percent, um, right around there. But don't quote me on that. Somewhere around there, and that is inclusive of 504 and TSD. Okay. Has the district historically, because the federal average is like 12 percent, so has the district historically been above? Like I know rates are rising mm -hmm. all over, but mm -hmm. I'm curious. Yeah, uh, when I came into this position a few years ago, 
Uh, we were just over 20%. I think we were close to 22%, maybe, for IEPs. Okay. Um, and so you do think with the rule changes around determining specific language disability, that's um, come down a little bit um, because we were relying on a discrepancy model and that was you know, not necessarily accurate. Um, and so, so we've definitely seen numbers come down that, in that way. Um, I would say we've also seen, you know, this is just my anecdotal kind of observation, some increase in the severity of disabilities that we've seen more recently. question um, what is the current involvement with other schools in the rise program currently um, I don't oversee the rise program okay so I don't know exactly who does Rachel are you looking for or sorry Sarah I apologize um, the <clears throat> so the rise program is housed in at res mm -hmm. Uh, this this spring to meet the needs of students at Braintree a specific behavior position was added to to Braintree mm -hmm. at the at the um, professional at the professional level to, to meet that need um, I, I think what you're asking is, if you're asking does do people from the rise program go out to the other buildings they do not yes they do not Okay. That has not been the model that has that Rise has operated in to this point. We tried it last year. Right, and that's that's what led me to this question. Right, was and so there was where a meeting with that. There was a meeting with um, uh, administrators and providers from across the district where it was agreed that we would try to build capacity in each building to provide the services at Braintree and Brookfield that were available at Randolph, but it had to be broken out into smaller pieces of FTE mm -hmm. because there's not enough students for a, a full, you know, full-time social worker at each building without significant ESSER funding like we had before. And even then it was only 0.5 at the, at the smaller buildings. And with those grants ending, we had to come up with a district plan. And so we increased the nursing and we increased para support and behavior support at the other campuses. So they're like mini RISE programs. Mm -hmm. the, the difference with the RISE program at Randolph Elementary is that it has its own classroom and two professional mm -hmm. clinical people, but they have three times as many students. So. But just to be clear, they don't run as their own classroom. Those students have access to their general That's right. classroom. They, it's a classroom space where they access the service. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that clarification. That's yeah, really important. Thank you. I have, a, I have another question about the least restrictive environment. Um, I'm wondering, like I've subbed in our schools and I've seen some, I have, you know, I don't have access to IEPs in those situations, but I mm -hmm. do have questions about students that are receiving very segregated schooling environments that I think, I just wonder if there is any move toward providing supports to help our IEP teams make decisions to include students for more of the academic and social experiences, because I'm, I'm concerned about their access. Yeah, um, I would say that we're having a lot of conversations internally and trying to help people understand that these students have rights to um, the general ed classroom and instruction and that it's our obligation to figure out what supports and services or accommodations need to be put in place to ensure that they have that access. Um, Rachel, this is part of the reason that tonight you heard things like free and appropriate public education, FAPE, and least restrictive environment, and you saw some of that conversation in my board report yes. talking yep. about what happened in the voluntary faculty and staff meeting this month, right? Yeah, so, I would love to hear more about it. <laughs> understood. Okay, I would 
I clearly people want to know more, and I think that's great. I think um, to be conscious of your time and also our time and agenda, I'm going to say thank you yes, very thanks, much. Thanks, Kayla. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Um, and scale. if you could make sure that Kyle gets the your slides yeah, so sure. that we can get them electronically. Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you, thank you so I'll much. I'll come with a dance next time, too. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Be careful. Oh, thank Thanks. you very much. Uh, budget timeline. Let's see if I can help get us back on track a little bit with our with our agenda here. In your board report, or in my board report, in your packet, mm -hmm. is a fairly extensive timeline, worked on by the entire administrative team, and and looked at. So we've started the process internally. Uh, we'll bring you a high-level expenditure, as you saw in this, we'll bring you a high-level expenditure budget for next meeting. Uh, so you'll be able to kind of look and see. Was there something that when you looked at this timeline, you said, oh, Michael, you have forgotten this, and this is what we do here in Orange Southwest. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I did go through the administrative team, and uh, Kayla, Heather, and Robin and I sat down to kind of get a jump start on it before it went to the whole administrative team. So we think we've got the pieces that you typically have and in a timeline fairly close to what you also typically see. But I wanted to make sure that you saw what the timeline looked like. And I think in that timeline I included when the state typically in gives you some of the data that you that you need. So it tends to be bless you tends to be some of the things that slow us down a little bit. Any questions for Michael on the timeline that he shared? I really appreciate this. Um, spelled out like this. Thanks. I was excited to read that multiple community members wanted to become bus drivers. I was. I'm excited about that that's, too. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Adam, you want to be a bus driver? Um. <laughs> How about an SLP? No. <laughs> uh, okay, um, Heather, you were going to talk about the ESSER? Yeah. Like, All right, so I have a, a little handout here to distribute. If you could take one of those and pass it around, that would be great. I don't know if you're interested yeah. in one of these. Sure. Okay, so this is somewhat of a celebratory sharing. I figured, uh, you know, always nice to have some good news. For a little bit of background and history, um, I want to share that uh, in 2021, um, Orange Southwest School District was awarded approximately $3 million in the ARP ESSER federal funding for recovery from COVID. Um, and we were compelled to make a spending plan for that and spend all of that by September 30th, 2024, which was the end of last month. Um, then we continued to apply for ESSER funded grants, including ARP ESSER After School, ARP ESSER Summer, and the Act 112 Mental Health Grant, which were all funded from the same source, which we were successful in those applications, which was another million dollars. And again, we were compelled to spend all that money by September 30, 2024. Um, earlier this year, the state notified us that we were good grant citizens and we had been identified as a safe risk for what's called late liquidation. Um, however, the original notification meant we had to do late liquidation, which gave us 14 more months to spend the money if we were under contract, like obligated, like we had either signed a contract with a vendor or we had put in the purchase, but it wasn't delivered because of supply chain or other things, right? So um, because of our investment strategies that we had used, where a lot of it was funding nurses, interventionists, and um, social workers, and people in our buildings, which we slowly moved into the local budget or moved those positions you know, out of our budget, um, when I investigated what could we do late liquidation on, there was about 80000 that we could encumber. But if I moved little pockets of money out of benefits that weren't spent or employees we could never find, there was 480000 
So I made a special request to the state and said, I know it's too late for an amendment, but would you please consider us for an amendment because I'm willing to move all this money and I have a team of people who would love to spend it. And so it was a special request. And so on Thursday, the 24th, we got approval. And by Monday, the 30th, we had put it all under contract. I'm talking people were calling bus charters. We want to do a whale watch and get in the contract. And so this is a list of, and really, this was a big lift for our principals, our teachers, our technology department, and most of all, Robin Pembroke and the business office. Because all of these POs had to be generated by September 30th. And yeah, so we spent $488,000. Um, and we get 14 more months to actually execute these trips and execute these services because they're under contract. It's going to be great. We booked live music. We booked field trips, scuba trips. All, no employees were allowed. It had to be contracted services or things. And so this is a rundown of all the cool things. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Really exciting. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yes, it was great. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was recovery for COVID. Oh wow. More on the back. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah. Um, right. And so, even though it was a lot of work, it was done with enthusiasm to get things in front of students, and also to you know this is a lift off the taxpayers, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. we would still want to do a whale watch even if it wasn't funded this way. Um, is there a way that we could access a little more information? Like, sure. I'm, you know, circus smirkus. I want to know yeah. more about that. So <laughs> that but I don't want to take up too much time. <laughs> it's basically a high um, engagement literacy programming that's going to happen at Randolph Elementary School this month. Okay, great. Yeah. So it'll be in the newsletters. Okay. <laughs> so you wrote something that said, I know it's too late for an amendment, but can we have an amendment? And you've gotten it. Yeah. Yeah. It was very it was, it was Kudos. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate you all saying that to her because she left out one name of a person that worked really hard to get this to happen, her. and it's Heather Lawler. Her own. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. We'll keep your eye on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I mean, in the big picture, I'm cheap. <laughs> Great. Anyway. Yeah, for what you bring in. Yeah. Uh, so, yay. So, yeah, if, if there's more details of different things on this list that you can send us, that would be great. But, yeah. boy, this is... Looking great forward to, so to all the it. newsletters and yes. more to come on that. I know. Really so good. Mm -hmm. Um, and to see money, sorry, but just to point out, see money going to the after school program when it was so hard to transition to yeah, having that field after trips. school program okay. in school. That's on a personal level very exciting. Yes. Um, and I think the launch has been good. Uh, it's you have been, it. Great. It was a bumpy, like it, it felt very much like a new program. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a couple of minor hiccups, but they were handled with grace. And um, the staff is lovely. They seem to be really engaged with kids. Um, my daughter loves it. It's petitioning to go five days a week. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just great. 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 Yeah. Thank you. And Emil. communication has been great too. Yeah. Which is huge. Yeah, and she's a tough critic, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, thank you, it's Heather, for the report. Um, executive limitations, 2.1. Second week, done. There we go. All right. Right. So looked at your looked at your recommendations from last time. I trimmed it down. I think I've got it more in the realm, and you'll see that with. Uh, with 2.2, I know we're looking at 2.1 right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. but went even went even really further, yeah. uh, and started working with Jeannie Collins. So Jeannie helped me help me trim down 2.1 to what we hope you'll find as acceptable and okay, and approve and move on. And then moving forward, I think you should expect the format that is 2.2, uh, which I think addresses really took into 
uh, all of the feedback that has been has been coming about these and I'll share with you that one of the challenges with writing this is like there's some repetitivity to it as I look at things from the past and how other people have interpreted it is my interpretation really all that different and there's a part that is you're writing that you say well you know is this my report or is this Lane's report that I've done something with and <laughs> prior to that template it was well I'm going to expand I'll go deeper I'll do this uh, the template helps me say okay this is not Lane's report it's my report and I think it I think it gets you to where where you want to be I was so confident in it that you'll see that I put the evidence in it I did not wait so that you might be able to uh, I know that you're only set to approve uh, two one today but uh, I'm betting to I'm hoping two two might be pretty close and you'll be saying hey we don't need to do a lot with that for next time so this felt good the template feels good, right? The, te the template helps me understand. Hey, here, here's what's going on. I think it covers. I think it covers what Rachel shared last time. Is man, you got to get these things shorter so that we can see it. We can see it at a glance. And I think it covers what Anne was talking about under what are the observable conditions and and whatnot. So. Uh, I really appreciate the ability to to work with Jeannie a little bit. She's the one that put me onto that onto that template, and it really does help me say, okay, I don't have to write, I don't have to write War and Peace, the monitoring uh, edition. <laughs> the monitoring. Edition. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Uh, so let's start with 2.1. This is our second read here. Um, comments, questions, concerns, accolades. I like this. I like the format. Well, you're looking at 2.2, .2, but 2.1 oh, is what. No, that, I like it too. Let me just visually. Right. Um, but 2.1 yeah. is what. Mm -hmm. We're on a second. It's right after the facilities report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It looks different, so it's. Yeah. 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 How do people feel about the progression from last month to this? You know, I'm kind of glancing at people who voiced cons concerns, uh, suggestions. I would love to see this one in this format, <laughs> personally, but. Next year. Next year. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, I'm willing to let. <laughs> I'm willing to let go. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I, I think you're 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 giving us plenty of information. This and is evidence. a matter of uh, maybe procedure. It's been it's been um, edited. Do we have to see it twice in its final form to approve it? First read is like it can be edited and then approved in its second form. Yep. Okay. So, mm -hmm. right, because this is the third time we've seen it, but technically the second read. Um, does anyone have something that would make them hesitate about having a vote on two point one? On two point one. All right, then I will entertain a motion. I will would like to move the policy 2.1 treatment of students, parents, guardians, and community. To be approved. To be approved. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Emil. Further discussion? All those in favor, please visibly and audibly. Say and show aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions. Unanimously passes. Woo! Woo. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> now, uh, I'm not going to consider this a first read on 2.2 only because we got it today. Um, so it wasn't in the you know the materials that went out yep. initially. But um, <coughs> boy, just visually, it's a treat. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really is so, so much easier is. to digest. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Love right it. The bad. And, and the work that you're putting into them. Great. Thank you. 
Uh, dun, dun, dun. No, I'm flipping through and not following my agenda. Um, oh, no, the first read is in here of 2.2. But we did just get it today, so I think, I think it's we, just still just, we still need to move it. Oh, it can be a first read today. Well, we're, you're my we're, read, we're, we're reading it. it. We're reading it. We're we, working on well, it. Great, so do we want to go for a second read and possible vote? I don't want to break the next rules. month. Yeah, but you're the rule person. I know these rules. We can vote on the next month. Great, second read, vote 2.2. We'll be on the next agenda. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, video surveillance policy, this is a second read. Should be all set for you to move and approve. Yeah. Anyone um, hesitancies, questions, concerns before we move to a vote? Mm -hmm. Anything you want to mention? My only concern yeah. is that our signage isn't currently adequate, and if we approve it, there will be a short window of time where we're not compliant. But it will put a fire under us to get there. I will make sure. <laughs> oh, this set number three? Yeah. If there's not signage, it can be in the windows tomorrow morning. Oh. It does not have to be fancy. It can be. Oh, posted. we're going to do like crayons? We can just. <laughs> <laughs> we, might, we, might use, we might use a computer, maybe even the poster maker, huh? <laughs> you just write windows. We see you. Yes, okay. we do have poster do. makers. That's true. We have po we could get students to make posters for us. Sure. That's like Daniel somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll make a motion. Uh, I move to approve the video surveillance surveillance policy. Second. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Further discussion. All those in favor, visibly and audibly. Aye. 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 Opposed. Extensions passes unanimously. Look at us flying through, please. This self-evaluation, you'll see that we just listed five minutes on the agenda for it because it's what we do. <laughs> so we better be doing it. Um, but I, do, I don't say that to silence anyone or to you know, say no discussion. Um, but is, it is our purpose. It's why we're here on a very broad level. Mm -hmm. um, why it's called Global Governance Commitment. Anyone's not committed to it, get, get there. <laughs> I'm making a joke and I don't have words. Um, no, does anyone have anything they want to say about this particular policy? This is completely reasonable. If we have concerns about our, all jokes this time, bad jokes. Um, concerns about our ability to uh, maintain this commitment. Great. Okay. All right. The next one's going to be harder. It's going to be longer than, what was that, a minute and a half, so. OK, consent agenda. Um, does anyone have uh, any edits to minutes either from the regular uh, September 11th board meeting, uh, subcommittee meetings. Um, I have one edit, which is the ends committee meeting, meeting minutes, say agenda, I should say minutes. Oh, whoops. It's okay. <laughs> if I had known ahead of time, man, I would have. Oh, right. Yeah, I didn't see that. Because I basically did what you said to take the agenda and <laughs> get the minutes, but I forgot that. Um, I had a question about something about that. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that there was a public comment from Curtis Corn about um, presidential election voting being held at a church instead of here at the school. Mm -hmm. well, was Did that sway your decision at all to move it, or will the well, where will the voting happen? That's my question. Uh, the voting, I have not got to a point where it's here. So from, I, I've got some work to do with the with the town clerk. I, last week at the, I, I talked with Kara a little bit about, is there something that we could offer? So the challenge is that we would have people coming and going mm -hmm. from, from the building. I think that they vote in here, and I think what we might be able to offer is entrance and exit through this door, 
those doors secured. Uh, okay. But I have not talked to the town clerk yet. Nice. Thank you so. for concerning that. I know that was yeah. a big concern from her and yep. other members of the public. Yeah, I so think the other they piece. Do about, isn't this the cafeteria mm. in is the gym? Yes. Yeah. So then the kids will. We'll work around it. Yeah. It's always been here. Mm-hmm. Um, but edits to the minutes oh, from the regular oh, sorry. meeting. Sorry, thank, thank you. Uh, do, do, do. So new hires, updates on resignations. And negotiation letter. This is entrance into negotiations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not any negotiation. It's what's just entering. It's what's required in the yeah. each of the each mm -hmm. of the agreements that uh, by about this time one of us have to add, enter into, ask the other to enter into. So they took care of the letter and now it's time to get the committees up and going and figure out what we're gonna do. Um, and then we had an addition, the reserve funds request. So the reserve fund request is uh, Craig uh, came and talked with uh, Robin. We're not able to have communications with the buses throughout the entire throughout the entire uh, district. We need to set up a repeater. Mm -hmm. And in the past, so we did some research and said, okay, so in the past, how has this happened? So what the buses have is the ability to talk on our frequency, which just has school. And they have the ability to change the channel and talk on town frequencies. The town frequencies have repeaters, but if we start talking on the town frequencies for regular communication, two things are going on. One, we overwhelm the town frequencies and all of those guys don't get to talk to each other while our buses are out on the roads. And two, our conversations are heard by the entire world. So when we're having a challenge on a bus, that's heard by the entire world. So I'm requesting uh, up to $18,000 from the reserve so that we can install a repeater and rectify that. Uh, my concern is, is that it is a safety uh, hazard to not have communications so everywhere with the bus. What's that? Have we just not had them in the past? In pockets? So Craig is new to the role. Wes had been in the role, and he had talked about in the past uh, there had been something with the town repeater. You know, I was a. I don't have like current. I don't think Wes has been in that role for quite a number of years. Um, so I, I think maybe at one point there was. I think maybe I. Here's I can tell maybe at one point they were just using the municipal frequencies. Um, and so they've, they've made some changes since then, but don't have the reach. With what reserve fund? Is this out of transportation or is it out of operating? Facilities. Facilities. That is a great question. Robin and I talked about it coming out of a reserve. Uh, I don't necessarily care but so let's I know that there's money in the operations one so let's just take it right from there and if well, she needs to why do wouldn't something you take different. it from transportation since it's a transportation I don't know what transportation has for a reserve necessarily I bet uh, it has a lot. Money. It's, it's for buses. yeah it's for bus replacement and things like mm -hmm. that right to keep it clean um, I would keep it in transportation because yeah. it's transportation related if it's there, I'm okay with it. Yeah, there's um, in the vehicle bus fund. There's nine hundred and twenty-two thousand. Great, that would be fine. So maybe, maybe we should approve it out of the transportation. 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 Yes, please. And, and then That's if you fine. go to Robin and she says, I don't, I think that it should come out of somewhere else, then come back. Right. Again. She'll okay. change it there. I think that's great. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. operational reserve has two million. If it is yeah. an emergent thing that cannot wait until the next meeting because it shouldn't wait. Yeah, we should. We should. I could do a special meeting. 
just remotely. We can use it. To, we can do a 10 minute remote right. special meeting to yeah. approve it out of another fund if, if it we needs need to. to. If, we, if, we, yeah, need if to. we need to. Yeah. I think we'll be all right. I think if you approve it and she needs to move it, she could probably just move it at the regular. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, I think that it's important that we identify that it's coming out. So the motion will be to approve up to $18,000 out of the transportation reserve mm -hmm. for a uh, repeater. Yeah, for communication. I love that even better. Uh, just curious, where, where does it get installed? I believe it gets installed on top of the bus garage. Cool. And they have been using the town frequency up until now? I don't know. Oh. I think that they have their own so we have our own, but the communication is very, very poor. Okay, good enough. I'll entertain a motion for that whole consent agenda if people feel comfortable with that mm. as a package deal. Second. Oh, I'll move it. And I'll you'll move. second it. Yeah. Yes, I move it. All right, I can do that. Um, do I have a second? Further discussion? All those in favor, audibly and visibly? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions unanimously passes. Uh, let's see. Superintendent's report. You want to? I would love to band? talk just a little bit more uh, or draw your attention. I guess I don't need to really talk about it, but uh, we talked. We talked about a lot of the things in here. I would like to really clearly talk about the substitute section. Mm -hmm. uh, so you saw that we are significantly underpaying substitutes. We don't attract substitutes. Mm -hmm. uh, when I sent the data to Robin, her words, and Robin is really good about being fiscally responsible, was looks like we need to increase our rates. Uh, I don't think I need to ask the board to increase those rates under policy governance. I think that I'm just going to tell you that I'm going to raise the rates and I'm going to be in the 125 range. And then the, uh, the commission, I really do want you to uh, know that the commission on the future of public education, one more time for the board at the right spot where you know, it's ready to be talked about, is coming to our TCC on October 21st. They're doing their regular meeting from 1 to 4 in the fishbowl room. The regular meeting, though, isn't the place where they're taking a lot of public comment. It's basically a board meeting, much like what you have here. They're going to do their work. They're going to take a one-hour break, and then they're going to move to the theater and they, are, they have a public engagement. That's the whole, the whole evening. I don't know exactly what that looks like, but it's out there on their, it's out there on their website. Uh, what do we think about a community message going out, announcing uh, it? Totally, totally doing that. And I'm happy to post on behalf of the board on Front Porch Forum if that's that something that, great. that mm -hmm. people think is. Is there going to be a virtual option for that? There looks like there is. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Front Porch Forum still exists. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I have the board account. Okay. If you if you are taking an action for the board, do we have to vote yes for it? So, um, again, really important that that feedback comes to the state so that they they are thinking about what it is Vermonters are thinking about. They mm -hmm. really do have to look at in this meeting. You've heard about facilities challenges. You've heard about workforce challenges, right? You're hearing about uh, potentially kids not getting all of the services that they necessarily need. You know, those are three really big things. And I could come up with two big post-it pages more of things that factor in here. I mean, I'm anticipating something like them giving each person three minutes to speak. And so I'm working on pulling together, hey, here's what the important pieces are. I specifically have them in the building that is identified in Vermont as most in need of being repa replaced, mm -hmm. right? So they can, they can see that. Um, and I encourage, I encourage board members to, 
come and talk about some of the challenges. I think that you all are highlighting this is a this is a big deal, and uh, you know the, the information I think is pretty pretty clear and pretty succinct in that in that report. So. To me, those are the those are the two big things. If there were questions on other pieces that you wanted to, I guess I could highlight a little bit the, I think I did, uh, the faculty and staff Google Meet that I have. Uh, we definitely had people there uh, talking about how do we meet kids' needs and what are the what are the challenges that are that are happening. I think we have a district that has a very low out of district, a very small number of kids that are out of district placed. So we really do work hard to keep all of our students within the district, within our school buildings. And that sometimes is, uh, it creates challenging, challenging situations of how do we meet everybody's needs. And, um, and that was an important, it was an important conversation and I appreciate the folks that came and came and had that. Okay. Um, what's, the, what's the meeting we were going to ask you to post about front porch Vermont? Yeah, um, October 21st, the commission October. on the Vermont public, the future of Vermont public schools. Commission on the future of Vermont public schools. Correct. Right. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I move that we, uh, as a board, they're doing a virtual option. Uh, so Authorize really Hannah to uh, you have little publicize the There's a motion meeting. being made. Oh, Just oh, hold on one second. Could you start of the over? Commission on the Future of Vermont Public Schools. I can't. I can't. I, can't. I have a motion kitchen. for Hannah to be able to post on Front Porch Forum and other digital places um, an announcement to the community that there will be an open meeting Monday, October 21st at 5 p.m. in the Murray Auditorium of the high school and inviting the public to attend. Did I get all the points? Yes. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> second. Oh, I have a third. Um, Sarah seconds. Uh, do, do all those in favor? Honorable, visible. Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. Passes. Thank you, and I shall do that. Uh, newsletters, principal reports. Um, are we still going to be doing that this year, having the principals? I block that. Yes. Um, so the block. So the first um, two invites we had were from the administrative okay. uh, level. So that was Robin and then right. Kayla, and then next okay. month, I believe, I'll have to look at the annual. Uh, Annual agenda again, but I think next week. Okay. So I always look forward to those. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that invite so, comes from yeah. Michael um, to the to the individual. Great. Um, action item recap. Okay, so the October twenty first. This isn't just about sharing out to the community if you're talking to people, but also please make your best effort to go yourselves. Um, subcommittee meetings, there is uh, an ends committee meeting already scheduled for October 30th at 5 um, at the district conference room. Um, ownership linkage, um, if, when you guys schedule a meeting, it does need to be warned. Um, so communicate with Kyle um, when that will be and uh, if a virtual option can be provided, please. Uh, and I have a couple of items that I'm going to make sure get onto the November agenda. Um, but if there are others, please know you can email either Anne or myself or Michael or Heather or Kyle. You have lots of options. Um, uh, if you're interested in something specifically getting onto the agenda. And please know that the public is also um, 
uh, welcome to email your school board representatives if you're interested in something being on the agenda and and uh, when we have our agenda meeting which is the chair uh, the vice chair Michael and superintendent um, and vice superintendent vice assistant assistant superintendent thank you um, we'll discuss if it can make it on to the next agenda I do have a quick question Curious generally about subcommittees. So, are these subcommittees of school board members? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, do you, uh, how many are there? Can you just briefly? There are two standing subcommittees, okay. which are the Ownership Linkage Committee and the Ends Committee. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, and also uh, a Professional Staff Negotiation Committee and a Support Staff Negotiation oh, Committee. Okay. Great. Lest we forget those ones. I have a question about that. Yeah, please. Just being new to the board mm -hmm. and the letter to open negotiations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we will, whenever will we talk about, like when does that scheduling happen? I don't know. So, so you want to do it? Sorry. We'll meet. The okay. committee will meet. Michael. Um, I'm not going to be no, on it this year. Michael and uh, Pietro. So how the negotiation meetings work is that um, we select a representative who speaks for us as the board it's it's a negotiation with the board but um only one person there's one speaker okay. oftentimes it's pietro um and you can kind of ask for someone else to speak yeah i think there's a little work that we have to do ahead of time so what I'll, yes. what I'll do is i'll reach out to the two different committees and say hey what do you want to schedule and how do you want to go about we'll have to put together a first proposal at some point and say hey what are you looking at and I'm gonna guess that you're gonna to say to me as a subcommittee Michael please put together a first proposal that encompasses the things that we need to encompass and then we'll look at it and figure out what's the strategy that you that you want to use and then we'll schedule a meeting with the association first meetings typically ground rules and scheduling okay. So, but our meeting probably we'll probably have a meeting or two before. I've always had a meeting or two before in other places. We meet with the association, or sometimes we've uh, sometimes what I've done is we've had a pre-meeting and sorted out what our schedules looked like, and then met before to do some strategizing and whatnot. So it's really yeah. going to be up to how you all want to operate. We do rely heavily on recommendations from. Uh, the superintendent and Robin um, because his money mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so the first couple of meetings are more about strategy and then once we're actually meeting with the unions um, then it's all collaboratively yeah. but Pietro's really great too with very basic questions and process and procedures awesome that's very helpful thank you yeah yeah okay if everyone feels satisfied and complete I will and there's no need for executive session request for executive session I will call this meeting adjourned at 754 wow good job <laughs> it's got to be some kind of a record